waiting for other collaborations. <clears throat> so my sound is a little weak today. Um, sorry about that. I had some uh, client calls and things around it. So never mind. So uh, basically, when I start saying about digital marketing, um, so digital marketing is is relatively, you know, if you look at for the past ten years, it's a it's there for quite some time, but it has it is one of those areas where people think uh, you know it it is it is just one part that they understand and then they become digital marketers, but it is not like that. So first of all, I'll I'll break that uh, norm and you know about uh, what digital marketing is. So basically, if you understand marketing and you should understand marketing before jumping into digital marketing because otherwise it is just a channel right it is like if you if you know to drive a car then you can drive almost every car right it, it doesn't mean that you know how to drive a bike and you can't call yourself as a uh, someone who can drive a car so the thing is like when it comes to digital marketing there are a, there are a ton of things that you need to understand it is not that for a digital marketing, you should be expert in everything. At least you should know what all the things that are connected. <clears throat> One of the example is performance marketing. And then there is moment marketing. And then there is social media marketing. Then there is SEO, that is, that is search engine optimization. So search engine optimization is nothing but, you know, when you, when you want to um, search something on Google, you will go and search and the result will come. So you are not bothered about, you know, what result, uh, you know, how the result came. You are just bothered about whether you got the right result or not. Right. And how these results are coming and who is doing the activities for, uh, you know, putting the results on top of it. That is what a search engine optimizer do. He is also someone uh, practicing digital marketing. And then there is, as I said, like social media marketing is there. Then paid advertisements is another segment. We call it search engine marketing where you will do advertisements on Google, you will do advertisements on Bing, you will do advertisements on other platforms like, you know, the OTT platforms. You might have seen that, you know, in a new age, we are talking about like, you know, whether uh, where Amazon Prime is there, Netflix is there, um, then there is other platforms like Disney plus Hotstar is there. So there are also advertisements that are going on in between uh, movies or in between, uh, you know, web series, things like that. That is again a duty of digital marketer. So this is a whole umbrella term. In this session, what I will do is like, I will take you through uh, a digital marketing process, how it happens. It, it won't be a technical session because uh, the time is limited for a technical session. It's, it's not that easy to cover everything, but I will give an overview of what digital marketing is and what are some of the strategies and what is some things that are associated with it. Okay, to start with, I'll try to share a, a share my screen. I have developed a small uh, presentation inside uh, a software called Canva. It's a web application you might already know. So I'll just share my screen. Let me know if you are able to see it. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes sir. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, OK, good. So here we'll talk about digital marketing as an over overview. And um, yeah, someone already informed about me, like I have been uh, in the industry for quite some time. And fortunately for the effort that I have put, I have been recognized by some of the top uh, mediums and companies like the Google's, the Project Management Institute, the LinkedIn and in Kerala, the Manorama News and things like that. Right. And uh, I, I have been helping businesses with brand and digital, <laughs> digital marketing and web related activities like web development and activities related to that. Now, why you are here? So here uh, is the agenda that I have planned for this program. OK, so where we are going is I'll give you so this I, I, I want this to be a, uh, you know, give and take session. It won't be a lecture and things like that, but I want you to understand some of the basics. After that, you know, if you have questions, maybe, you know, we can uh, maybe in next uh, 20, 30 minutes, we, I'll finish this off and then I'll take questions and or I will ask questions and, you know, we can have an interaction. So basically for you to ask questions, you need to have clarity on certain elements that I will try to clarify uh, in this journey. So first of all, 
uh, we'll discuss about the fundamentals of uh, you know digital marketing like what are the fundamentals for digital marketing and we will identify digital marketing strategies core and on setting digital marketing goals like you know whatever things that you do for your business there should be goals attached to it right then we will understand like how you can find out a target audience what is a target audience set and then we will also look at user journey mapping right for example how a user comes to your website how he or she interacts and what is the next step that it takes basically the journey a user will have okay so theoretically digital marketing is nothing but marketing and prom promotions through digital channels digital channels such as social media mobile applications emails web applications search engines website and basically as i said like you know the otts the whole uh, the digital the screen based things and uh, why we are dis discussing digital marketing at this point you know in this picture you can see like you know large hoardings uh, across streets across popular metros you can see all these offline ads right the traditional marketing things why we are discussing at this moment about digital marketing the reason is very simple we are hit by a you know a pandemic and we are all at home and we are trying to do things that are possible within that space right and uh, there is an astonishing number that is it, this is the first uh, time okay this is the in, during the 2020s uh, 2020 beginning when the coronavirus was hit and you know things were going uh, drastically down the usage in terms of the social media usage has increased by 87 percentage uh, ajay uh, ajay like, once again uh, are you sharing your screen ajay yeah yeah so are you not able to see no we are not able to see okay uh, i don't I'll... know uh, someone has confirmed earlier that they could see uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Not seeing, so I I thought it was my problem. I was searching for the different options. Yeah, okay. now I can. Yeah, now it's visible, sir. Okay. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Thank you. Fine. No, uh, uh, the introduction part was uh, you know just a few things that the, the, I was sharing. You know what is, what is the theory behind this, and uh, you know there are traditional mediums that are available, and why it is the right time for digital marketing, and why it is the most important time we are in 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 terms of history of. You know all the marketing we are in a in a uh, totally in a different curve right so digital marketing when i say about it it's like 87 percentage increase is there in the social media usage amid the lockdown so indians are spending four hours on facebook and whatsapp and that is we know that that is a very small number right four hours it's not uh, the uh, you know it's it's the whole average it's you know it includes the Elder, elderly people, the kids and the adults. So if you take only the adults, it is not just four hours. You can actually uh, keep a track of those things. If you're using um, uh, iOS, I'm not sure about the Android thing, but you'll, you'll get to see that you are spending too much time on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and all those media. And since these are the uh, areas that, uh, you know, people spend time, it is, it is wise decision to market in these areas because your target market is spending time on these uh, you know mediums now as i said like digital marketing is an umbrella term it includes uh, search engine marketing seo acm content marketing is another thing email marketing is there video marketing is there and all these things are connected and you know it, it there are a lot of things more than this but i just put it for your basic understanding so i am not going in deep uh, in depth to this but you'll get a, a fair idea about it and when we say about digital we can uh, skip this particular guy called you know jeff bezos he's the founder of amazon and he said it's hard to find things that won't sell online if you can uh, you know from education to finance to uh, you know the day-to-day -day things that we use the clothes everything that is you know it's available online where you can consume it where you can purchase it you can subscribe it and you know things are going digital and he he quoted this a few years ago now it is like more and more relevant day by day and basically what we are doing is through digital marketing it is the we are trying to have this you know the ability to influence the customer decision for example you know it can be it, it's not that we will you know make the customer to buy a product it can be like 
uh, taking an action. You know, for example, it can be donating for a cause. It can be moments like you know when when we say moments on digital marketing, it can be some some actions, maybe a scroll, maybe looking at some uh, some videos, things like that, and then purchasing, like the buying thing will come, and attending and more. Like for example, you know you will be attending a webinar like the one we have we are doing. This also can be, uh, you know, we can actually create a funnel and bring people for events like this. So that can also be another thing. So basically, it is the power to influence the consumer decision or the customer decisions. That is what we are trying to do, right? And uh, it's a, uh, it's basically about get started on. Uh, let's get started on the digital if the target audience is available online. So. Most of the cases, people are available online. People are using it. But say, for example, if you are trying to sell um, a pension or retirement thing, that audience might not be available, right? So you have to do the marketing only if if you understand that the target audience is available online. But again, when I say about the the pension and you know retirement related things, there are a community that can influence these people, right? For example, it can be their children, their cousins, their brothers. So you understand my point, right? So if the target audience or the people who are connected with the target audience is available online, then only you need to uh, you know, spend time on doing the digital marketing. That's just a disclaimer I want to put. And there is something called the golden circle. Like whenever you do marketing, uh, people tend to do that. Okay, we have a, a product. For example, you have a a diary okay i have a diary and i want to sell a diary to my customers so people will jump on marketing you know instead of they understanding about what all things why should someone purchase a diary and you know what is the purpose behind that action people will start to uh, you know start to jump in and do marketing and eventually it will fail the reason is they are not looking at the core problem if i am per i want to purchase a diary there can be a certain period right for example the beginning of a year or towards the end of a year planning for the next year so and and i want to be an organized person and i want to achieve certain things so when you run ads like this like you know when especially when you go for digital the advantage is like you can target people based on their age location gender interest their occupation their mobile device imagine at this age if we are we are able to target people like this we can sell like crazy, right? This type of a luxury is not available for any traditional medium, right? Imagine uh, using, you know, putting ads on a newspaper. I'm not against putting ads on newspaper, but I'm just saying you don't have track about how many people gone through that ad. Um, did they took any action? You might eventually see some sales happening. So you will imagine that it is due to this uh, particular ad. And the next day it becomes, you know, today's newspaper is, uh, gone like you know yesterday's newspaper is today's facebook waste paper nobody's going to take it and go through the ads and read so it is gone and the amount is huge like if you compare digital marketing with the traditional marketing the amount that you need to spend is huge and the interesting part is if you if you made any mistake in the advertisement okay once it is printed once it is gone to say, a TV commercials, it's hard or it's literally impossible for you to take it back and remove and edit it, which is possible in digital medium, right? If you are using digital marketing, you can, you can, you will have more control over your data and advertisements and you will get towards the end of the ad, you will be able to see like how many people clicked on, clicked on this particular ad, how many conversion happened. Uh, what was the, you know, how was the target audience like? Did they engage? If it is a video, how much uh, minutes they have watched the video? So they have a control over all these uh, things. Right. So now, uh, going towards us a little deeper to the digital marketing thing. I know it's, this is a little bit of, uh, again, a theory part, but I'm just, I'll just try to keep it as simple as possible. So we have to, uh, as I said, like we have to set goals, right? And in uh, business and marketing, we have to set smart goals. Otherwise, there is no point in having a vague and not so, um, you know, this prescribed goals. So we have to put smart goals. And what is why I put it as CAPS, S-M-A-R-T, I will discuss on the next slide. Then define TG. Do you know what TG is? TG stands for 
target audience the target audience is that person whom you want to see your advertisement okay, that is the target audience then user journey map as i said like you know how the user will interact what is their journey like then campaign development is there content management calendar is another important thing then resource planning and research measuring so i'll go in in depth to few of these things so that you will get an understanding of say for example if you want to run an ad you may not have to know all the uh, nuances and you know all the details and technicalities of running an ad but at least you should know like if tomorrow you are starting a business okay or if you if tomorrow you you say for example you are um you're having an app, app idea or something like that and you want to implement it and you are hiring a digital marketer just an example or you you are uh, learning by yourself and you are implementing it in both the cases you need to see whether you are going through the right track okay so smart goal is nothing but st it stands for specific measurable achievable relevant and timed okay a goal should be specific you should know that you know whom you are targeting what is it that you you need to achieve it should be measurable like you need to have a data towards the end to know that okay you are uh, you know going through the right direction and it should be achievable it shouldn't be too much of fancy that you know i will target everybody in india it shouldn't be like that it should be specific you know it's it's like uh, it should be achievable basically you you should know that if we we are spending x amount we will be able to target say this percentage of this particular community right and it should be relevant obvious thing right if you are uh, running an ad or if you are setting up a campaign that is not relevant to the target audience there is no point in having it no matter how specifically you target it should be relevant and it should it should be done in a timely basis we should know that when the ad will start or the campaign will start where it is going and how to manage and handle it the timeline is more more important here because even if it, the ad didn't worked out you should be able to clear it off like and you know, we have to start again so goal setting is, there are some examples like you know as i said the specific thing the goal can be to increase the email subscribers by 20% by the end of first quarter see it is specific it is time bound and we know that what is it that we are trying to achieve things are clear here uh double the uh, quality leads by increasing the promoted budget by 15% again it is specific and you know you can measure it whether you know it, it's doubled once we put 15% what is the expected outcome are we doing it uh you know in the right way all these things so these are some some examples another one is like you know increase the video views up to say 10000 by using promotions you know you you have to have a clarity on what is it that you are trying to achieve now now that you know that okay what is it that you need and you know uh, this is the this is the specific thing that you need to achieve you need to be very very clear about whom you are targeting right so you need to define your target audience so what i am showing here is a uh, it's it's a simply a persona creation so basically a persona means you know you you are imagining someone as a um, your target audience say for example if you are targeting say a um, branding company ceos like you know if i i'm i'm a branding and digital marketing company ceo if you are targeting me you will you will figure out few of the things like where this person say if it is ajay where ajay is spending his time online uh, what are his what all are his pain points what is his age group like what is, where is uh, you know his location what is his occupation that we already know what are his motivations what are his goals what are his frustrations you know once you understand a customer like this i'm not when i say ajay i'm not saying about one person i'm saying about uh, you know people who are in a similar category right for example if you are trying to uh, yeah just let me just just ask this question um, can anybody say, say any any particular thing that you are trying to do for example the um, any any business like you know you want to target any particular customer any any example do you have say for example you want to target uh, any any particular person in specific just an example can anyone just just say it? yeah me and my friend wanted to sell some bike accessories and we want to uh, target some bikers uh, to travelers perfect so you want to target 
bikers and do you have any specific type of bike bikers uh, travelers travelers who like are yeah, riders yeah. basically riders. riders riders okay great so that is that can be taken as one example okay so for example the travelers for the example the riders name is ab okay and we will put and there can be a lot of other names we will just put it as ab just for us to create a persona and we will understand that okay ab is a uh, say a male with uh, somewhere between 22 to 25 or 25 26 age group i'm just saying and uh, his basic location is say um dubai okay or for example say uh, kerala trivandrum okay and uh, his occupation is he is a IT uh, engineer, and we will then think what are his motivations. If, if he want to travel, then his motivations can be like you know seeing the world. He will be emotionally connected with nature. He will have some uh, some level of attachment towards you know the the journey, and he will have some uh, you know psychological reasons to go for a ride. And he will have a a, a peer group also. You know he want to ride with a group of people. And his goal can be like you know traveling X Y uh, you know X location. For example, if it is in Kerala, he want to initially travel to say Munar or say Himalaya, okay. And if it is Himalaya, uh, if he is going to the you know Himalayas and he will be using a, say for example a bullet or a you know Himalayan rider. And for that particular thing, what all accessories we can recommend him, okay. And now that we understand these things. We can recommend him that, uh, for example, you know, you need um, say like helmet, the gears and uh, glasses and glasses, things like that. You can actually recommend these things to AB. When I say AB, it's a it's a it's a community that we are trying to address, right? And imagine and and, and how we do it. That is another thing. Like how can we find out this particular person? So uh, if you are using social media, you already know that you are following. If you just take, for example, you you all be using Instagram, right? There is an explore page in Instagram. The things that are popping up in your explore page and your friends explore page. And if it is a, a, a totally different person, like you and your friend can have some similarities in between. But if it is a totally different person, his explore page will be different. Why is it so? Because that is how they have understood, you know, that uh, machine learning process where they have understood that this person, AB, is more into travel, riding, and, you know, those kind of activities. Let's show him more of the, that content because he used to consume that content. Let's show him more, more of that content. And if it is, you know, if it's in Facebook, he might be following such pages and he might be following pages related to travelers. For example, Sandosh George Kulangara, he might be following his videos and contents or, or other uh, you know, influencers. Now we can actually target these people based on their interest. Okay. There is an, uh, if you're using Facebook, you know that there is a portion where you can add your interest. You can add your hobbies. You can add, uh, you know, I mean, you can add whether you traveled from this place to another place you can mark whether you have uh, got a new job while putting all these things what we will think is our friends will see these updates and you know you are kind of uh, feeling satisfied that okay i have put this status and that's it but apart from this there is another marketing side to it from a marketing perspective we are collecting all this data okay this person moved from this place to another place and he's he keep on moving and uh, you know he achieved certain things he's putting um uh, you know things related to travel he's he's joining groups related to you know travel and tourism and things like that when your ad is targeted to this particular category the chances of you getting a business is very very high in compared in compared to a general uh, pushing the ad to a general audience you got my point so that is how you we need to create a customer persona we have to understand what are his frustrations where he want to uh, you know go what is it it's what are his motivations what are his goals what is his basic profile look like so likewise you have to create a pattern of people and you have to create a target audience 
uh, or define your customer persona. Right. Now, um, let's talk about user journey mapping. Okay. Uh, I'll, I won't go to the very details, but I'll just give an overview. So basically, we have awareness, consideration, intent, decision, and loyalty. This is how the user journey mapping has been put as a, a board term. Just imagine, uh, so I'm again coming back to you to ask a question. So if you want to purchase a, um, say a laptop, okay, you want to purchase a gaming laptop, uh, how you are going to purchase it? Can anyone just tell like, you know, if you are one, if you want to purchase a laptop, how, how you are going to do it? Imagine you are, you are going to purchase it online anyway, and how you are going to purchase it. Can anyone just just uh, feel free to uh, you know unmute and tell like this is not a rocket science question. Just to pull the uh, top ten gaming laptops in India under the right okay. and ask them gaming uh, friends friends who play games right and just go to okay. Flipkart and filter right yeah filter then. Uh, you are on filter me. and find the uh, filter and find the bus from uh, top 10. Okay. And watch the reviews. Okay. That's. And then you will purchase it. Uh, then I will find uh, su suggestion from friends and uh, who know about laptops and I will buy it. Okay. So, uh, from what you have said, how much time it will take for you to uh, purchase this? Like for this whole thing to happen, how much time it will take? Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Two weeks. Why two weeks? Because I have already purchased a laptop uh, and it, it took two weeks for uh, filtering and doing uh, suggestion from our others. And okay. it took two weeks. Me. Perfect, perfect. So that 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 was what I I wanted to hear. So it is not like initially when you when you mentioned the steps, uh, the other people might have thought that you know this happened in say twenty minutes, or maybe less than that, right? But the truth is, it is that is that is where we break the uh, basic understanding of customer journey. It is not that you want a laptop, you go to the website, you saw something, you find the reviews, you ask some of your friends, you make the purchase. It is not like that. You wanted something, you make a basic research. You may still go to the uh, you know, Flipkart or Amazon. You will see whether any upcoming things are happening like the Independence Day sale or the Diwali sale or the Great Indian sale. Then you will kind of close that and you know you will go to some other thing. Some distractions will come. It can be a phone call. It can be a message from WhatsApp, or you know, it can be some uh, new reels that you have found on uh, Instagram, and you go behind it, right? Then later on, you will again come back and you will again start this journey. What happens is like it will take like two weeks, or you know, might more than that sometimes. Right? That is how the uh, the actual user user journey will look like. It's not like straight from it start with A and it goes to you know Z. It, it actually goes through a lot of ups and downs. In between, you will have uh, other thought process. You will also look at if you are focusing on Flipkart. You will also look at uh, how is it going in Amazon, right? And what happens is like for example, if you went till the uh, purchase section of say Flipkart, and you haven't made the purchase, you just went there. You just went to the product detail page. And you identified this thing. Maybe you have added it to cart, and then you close it and you go back to Facebook, right? And on Facebook, you will be able to see the same advertisement of these laptops or similar to these models, right? How it is possible? It's possible because they have put something called a pixel, right? So they understood that this customer want this laptop due to some reason they haven't purchased. It can be price, it can be specifications, or it can be some other reasons where, you know, maybe a customer got into some other thing and they closed it. So when they are retargeting you based on, you know, these pixels and whatever activities you have done, the chances of you going back to make a purchase is high. 
and they will also try to give you a discount okay if they for example you are trying to purchase the laptops for 50000 and after some time when you use your facebook you you might get an offer for say 45000 or 48000 right so they are just they are they are testing whether this person is making a logical uh, reasoning behind making this purchase if it is price that is uh, you know your issue then you will again go if you find that it is 45000 you will again go and purchase if it is not they will run another ab test like you know they will they will put it as a for example they will Yeah, it was stuck in between. Uh, were you able to hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Okay, fine. I think Aaron is still not able to hear. I'm able to hear. I am. I want the other people to respond. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Cool. Okay, so I'm just saying about you know the the user journey and how it, this will happen. So now that you go, got an idea, right? Uh, so whenever again you again it is stuck. Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll uh, I'll turn off my oh, no, okay. My video is not shared. I think so... it was. I said it is. It is now okay. I think I got dropped and joined back. Okay, if anything goes wrong, I will join uh, in this link again. Yeah. All right. Okay. Fine. So that is the user journey map that we have mentioned, and here we can you know define it in different ways. Like uh, you know the the journey map can be around the activities where the purpose. So my purpose will be to plan gift for my friend. The search process will be searching products via online, uh, the search engines where I'll go and purchase. Um, you know, go and figure out what what is the what are the products that are available to give us a gift. Then it opens to a web page. Okay. And I'll check the product details, check more information, even the pricing. Then I will go and make a purchase. So these are some uh, some examples of how the uh, you know overall advertise so, sorry overall purchase happens. So it can be like say for example, if you are looking for a opening, okay, um, you go for job sites. You will then look at what all things are available there, and then you will uh, you know apply, and you might get your uh, you may not get an opportunity. So here, few things that you need. If you if you drill down to a basic fundamental things, it it's it can be divided to three. So this is based upon uh, the research I have made, and uh, you know over the past years I have identified that these three things are of vital importance. That is time, people, and tools. So when I say time, as I said, like you know you have to showcase certain things on a specific time. So you have to be uh, basically you should be omnipresent and you should actually showcase things to people whenever they need it. So how how you will know that people will need a particular thing? You never know. You will you will keep on putting things so that uh, you know you will you will see that at certain point people are making purchase and then you will repeat it. Then people of course is the core central part of it. They are the ones who take decisions. They are the ones who become your customer, who becomes your rivals. So people around it. And then tools. Okay, when it comes to digital marketing, we can have n number of tools, and we need to find out what works for us and what doesn't work for us. There was an interesting thing that I have uh, heard last day. It was a interview by uh, Jeff Bezos itself. Okay, where he was saying that everybody is worried about what all things happen, what all will happen in the next ten years, and where he said he is only worried about what all thing that uh, you know, won't change in the next 10 years. And he said, like, one of the thing is that, you know, everybody need, um, you know, that uh, the product delivery at the earliest. Everybody need high quality products in lesser price. Everybody needs, uh, you know, um, the, the customer, I mean, every, everybody, every customer needs to have a, a supreme, supreme importance for this uh, you know, products that they are selling. So he said, like, even after 10 years, people will not come to him and say that, Jeff, I am, uh, I know I'm interested to give, pay you more 
for the product that I'm going to buy. It never happens, right? We all, all need a product that is affordable and we are not ready to compromise on quality as well. So these are some, some insights that we need to collect and we need to understand. And for when it comes to digital marketing also, there are a lot of tools that help us to take decisions. So there are basically there are things like Google Analytics, Search Console, and uh, you know HubSpot. There is there are CRMs and things like that, which will help us to understand how our marketing activities are going. Inside Instagram, also you will have and Facebook as well. And when I say Instagram, it's Facebook and Instagram, and even YouTube and all. You will have these facilities where we need to we will be able to see the insights. You know, at what period people are interacting to my post. Uh, how my posts are going, um, you know, at, when uh, within which device they are trying to engage with uh, or in which device they are using these uh, platforms. So these are just, just uh, if you if you don't understand anything <laughs> from this particular presentation, just keep in mind that these three things and this is same in the case of business as well. Time, people and tools plays a relevant and vital role. Right, and earlier when I, I mentioned about you know Google Analytics and things like that, we need to measure our marketing activities. Otherwise, we never know it, whether it was a success or failure. So we need to figure out like you know what all things are happening from which device they are uh, you know visiting your website, uh, what are their uh, you know how much time they spend on your website, what is the bounce rate? Bounce rate is nothing but you know the time they spend on a website. Like for example, if the bounce rate is low. It's actually good for your, uh, you know, website. So we want we want to make sure that people who visit your website don't just visit for a few seconds and they jump off. We have to reduce. Uh, I mean, we have to increase the time they spend on your website. That is one of the thing. Like we are making beautiful websites, and if in, you know we are putting all the effort, we are thinking about design thinking. And if after all the effort, people are not spending time on your website, it means there is something just going wrong. So we have to measure and we have to keep the analytics ready with us. And this is how uh, a general digital marketing looks like. I mean, uh, a digital marketing uh, effort look like. Okay. For example, if it's a campaign, it will have a title, it will have a key message, and it will have a content. So content can be uh, text, images, videos, website interfaces, things like that. And where it is coming? It will be coming on website. It can be, uh, you know, it will be coming on social media, emails, messenger apps, and towards the end, I have put CTAs. Uh, anyone here know what a CTA is? CTA. Okay. So CTA stands for call to actions. Okay. Call to actions means whenever you are creating a website, and whenever you know, when whenever you are running an ad. Whenever you are putting something, you have to make sure that it it pushes the user to take an action. So it can be, say, for example, if it is a YouTube channel, people used to tell that, you know, please hit the subscribe button. So that is an action. People are trying to tell you to take an action. If it is an online purchase, it can be buy now or add to cart. And if it is if it is a website, it can be contact us or get in touch. So these are some examples of uh, CTAs or call to actions. So we have to make sure that our marketing efforts, whether it is a website or app or um, digital marketing activities, it, it should have a call to action. Otherwise, there is no point. See, imagine you went to a, a website and you liked it. You, uh, you, know, you totally loved the overall design and aesthetic of the website. But the website is not telling to take any action. And what will you do? You will you will just like it. You will appreciate the designer, and you will get uh, you know you will close and go to other things, right? But imagine if in that same website, after all this effort, if they are putting an action, say for example, uh, you know, get in touch with uh, for a consulting call, then people will would like to you know take an action, and it can even be simple uh, thing like you know maybe. Uh, drop your email address so that you know you 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 will get our newsletter or updates. So we should make sure that in all our efforts, there is a call to action attached to it. It is uh, same in case of digital marketing as well as for the you know other other things that we do like the web and mobile app development or whatever it is. 
Now, when it comes to social media, I'll just uh, go through this particular thing. It is called something called the content calendar. It is not that, for example, um, today is January 20. January 26 is our Republic Day in India. It is uh, January 26 is the Republic Day. So when are you as a digital marketer going to plan the, the creative or the content for uh, Republic Day? It is not on 25th of January. It can be today or it can be towards the beginning of uh, January, for example, the 1st of January. So there are two ways that we uh, in, in front of many days we do. One is we do we create a weekly calendar and we create a monthly calendar. So if it is a monthly calendar, we will have you know, we will identify all that special days and then we will put those special days in a um, in Excel and we will we will add, you know, we will tag the respective creative people for that to create the uh, designs. Right. So now you will have a clarity. It's not like otherwise what happens is on 25th of Jan, you will realize that, oh, I forgot to uh, create a poster for uh, January 26. It is uh, Republic Day and it, then it is a rush. And especially if you are handling like, you know, 10, 15 clients, things are, uh, you know, there are chances of things going, uh, gonna mess up. So you need to have a content calendar. And uh, this is just an example of a basic content calendar. Uh, where we will mention the date, we will men I mean the day. We will mention the topic or title. We will mention the you know the the content like you know whether it is a poster or PDF ebook download or whether it is a video. Then we will define on which all platforms it should come, and we will also mention the target audience to whom it will be going. So here you you might have a doubt like you know um, the target audience is, is same like you know why should we mention that? The reason is. Uh, for a uh, uh, you know, the, in terms of the Republic Day poster, it is general. But say for example, if if you are running a campaign for a hospital, okay, the campaign might be specifically for say for example, um, cardiac related uh, you know awareness. Then there is no point in putting it to the you know keeping as a whole uh, audience. It, it's better to put it in a a specific age group and gender, I mean, not gender, but a specific age group, right? The other people will also see because it, it goes through the uh, page, but when you run it as an ad, it will it should be specific, right? And what is the CTA for that? What is the call to action for that? It can be sign up for a free checkup, right? So here I have mentioned World Hurt Day is the, is the topic and uh, the content is like hurtdayposter.png, it's a, it's a poster. And it will go on to Facebook, Instagram, and email. I am targeting, say, um, say for example, Annie. Okay, Annie. Annie represents uh, uh, people who have uh, who, who are in this age group. The call to action will be: there is a free uh, checkup that is going uh, in the hospital. You can sign up for free checkup. That that can be the call to action. Similarly, there are other other examples like you know, for a, if it's a training and health uh, training on healthy lifestyle, the action will be to download an ebook, okay, and it will go to email and LinkedIn. The action item will be you know to sign up for the newsletter. Good idea, right? So this is uh, basically you know what what all things that we can do in in marketing and uh, branding and you know doing the digital marketing in the proper way and the opportunity is like worldwide and this is uh, only the case of 2019 i'm sure that the numbers uh, have gone much much bigger in 2019 it was like 4.39 billion people who are using internet and the advantage is like we sitting in some corner of the world can target people on any location if it is available in the map. How interesting it is, right? So, so now in in my case, I'm I'm sitting in right now. I'm in Kerala. I can I am uh, at present my ads are running in in Dubai. And my ads are running in US. When I say my ads, it's uh, for the clients I'm running ads. So that is the power of uh, this digital media, right? So, and um, who all can make use of digital marketing and, uh, you know, its verticals can be like businesses, startups, enterprises, even religions, politics, real estate. I have even run ads for uh, tem temples and churches. So, even they need marketing. So, those are some, some funny news. Yeah, and uh, this is a, a content that I recommend, like, you know, if you want to 
um, learn more about digital marketing. This is free and paid. And in addition to that, I also have an academy called Freshmind Academy, where also you can uh, you know learn and understand digital marketing activities. And you know, if you are serious about advanced courses, you can uh, sign up there. For you to get a better understanding with free things, I have put it here. You can take a look at it. These are just some of the clients that we work with. And yeah, this is basically the, the company and the office. So yeah, that's it. So Arun, I'm, um, I'm open for discussion. Uh, if you people have any doubts, need any help, anything that we know we can discuss. I, I don't have any doubts. People will be asking you questions. Uh, you okay. can stop uh, sharing. I think yeah, uh, I yeah, I stopped. Yeah, yeah, I have stopped. Uh, Ajay, it was so nice. Uh, one thing you can uh, um, explain about uh, if you are um, handling a course for the freshers. Uh, I know it's a paid course. Um, yeah. When that next batch will be starting, if you can um, talk to people, so someone who is interested, they might can uh, might opt for it. Yeah, and so they will definitely the academy... ask questions now. Okay, fine, fine. So the academy uh, is called Fresh Mind Academy. You can visit freshmindacademy.com. Uh, details are there. Our class next batch starts on the first week of February. So whoever want to join for an advanced course, you can sign up or you can get in touch with me. I, I don't have my number and all. Even the last slide I was showing my contact number. Or you can just visit uh, freshmindacademy.com and uh, you know there is a option where you can connect with the uh, course coordinator and he will be able to help. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to take questions if any. I have a question. Okay. If we search anything on Flipkart and then uh, close tab, we will find the ad from Instagram and Facebook, right? Right. How this is working? Uh, the behind work. <coughs> is it uh, Flipkart is selling our data or it is using our uh, mobile cache uh, or mobile history? Yeah. So uh, this is basically you... retargeting ads. So how they are they are able to do it is they will embed a code called pixel. Ideally, this pixel code has been, you know, it will be taken from Facebook. So while setting up the Facebook ad, you can also set up something called pixel, P-A-X-E-L, where you, uh, you know, you will get a code. You can embed this particular thing in your web page as and where you need it. You can have a generic one or you can put it on specific uh, pages as well. And uh, Whenever someone comes to you know your site and you know they after closing they go to um, you know their Facebook feed they will be able to see and it won't be uh, you know they won't be able to track if you are using say an incognito window or a private window on Safari or an incognito window on Chrome they won't be able to do it because the cookies are not connected. So in some website also you will be able to see like allow cookies and you know things like that that. That is how they are able to track you. Sometimes it is good as well because, as I said, like you know, they might uh, show you some discounts and offers because you are a uh, you know they think that you will you will become a customer because you went to this particular site thinking that you you want to purchase this product. Yeah. Uh, the actual things are getting worse. It's okay if I search for a flip card. But what's happening now is if I'm chatting with someone in WhatsApp, even though the content in WhatsApp chat is also visible in uh, Facebook ads. If I if I said something about my friend is some about some topic, the same content is showing in the Facebook too. I think WhatsApp is is WhatsApp sharing uh, uh, sending uh, selling my data. Also. You 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 don't even have to do that if you take uh, you know if you sit near your uh, if you're using an Android phone I believe you are using an Android phone if you're say, sitting near your Android phone and if you just keep talking about uh, say for example Nike products or you know shoes and sneakers and things like that you will again be able to see it because uh, even if your phone is locked it is still recording your voice I mean it's not like you, they will record it and send but they will take those keywords. Right. You just you can experiment it. You can just keep your phone somewhere and uh, keep on telling your friend about and not repeatedly saying that shoes, shoes, shoes. But, you know, mentioned that I was I'm planning to buy a shoes. I think Nike is a good product. 
and uh, you can also plan uh, you know sneakers from nike or um, the any, any particular brand name okay and then if you after some time if you just you know go there you'll you'll see that uh, some of the ads are coming up related to this so it's not just whatsapp it's uh, it's there and what they are saying and you can actually close those permissions as well there are settings where you can close those type of uh, uh, you know permissions but usually it, it is owned by default thank you sir i got it thank you thank you yeah anyone have any other questions sir i have a question uh, my name is mahesh uh, i'm working in neonics so during your uh, session you said about uh, the call to action right correct so my uh, question is what are the things that we should uh, look into or we should ensure while designing to ensure that call to action correct so when you uh, yeah that's a good question and you should know about call to action uh, because that, that that is where we are putting all the effort to you know uh, it's like it's like you know you you went to purchase something and the shopkeeper is not telling you anything and he's not interested you will just look at this shop and you know you will go uh, otherwise you will have you should have that much intention to purchase a product right so uh, getting to call to action especially from a ui design perspective you need to understand what colors you need to use how you should emphasize the um, you know the buttons what should be the you know size of the button should you use a active button or an inactive button uh, i'll tell a simple example you just uh, everyone who is listening to it you just observe it next time you visit a proper website there will be two buttons okay and no two buttons which are adjacent will have the same color okay one will be having a fill color for example if it is green they will have a filled green color with white text if it if there is a button attached to it you know next to it the chances of it will be having a green outline so here the use the the organization want you to take two actions but out of the two which is the most important thing they want you to take that is the one they will put as a prominent uh, thing right for example it can be uh, in in terms of our website it can be view portfolio contact us okay and uh, view portfolio they want you to uh, click because you want to see what all works they have done but the more important thing they want to do is contact us because then only you you know it will become a lead and then they they will get a business so the contact us button will be maybe in a red color highlighted red color with white uh, font in it and the button next to it will be a less but still uh, an important button but they want you to take this particular action and if it is uh, and if you start observing every uh, website you know on the, on the top page uh, towards uh, there will be a header there will be a small paragraph text below it there will be a button right so in the header they are trying to hook your attention in the paragraph the, or the small text just below it they are trying to give you reasons to make a decision and just below that they will put an action item so yeah when whenever you design a website or home page or you know landing page just understand that what the customer want to highlight there and then you you plan your uh, designs accordingly if you just google for like you know ui uh, cts for ui and ui design trends for cts and all you'll get some examples what is right what is wrong which one should have shadow which one shouldn't have any uh, in any particular action things like that okay sir thank you thank you uh, any questions anyone arun uh, can i show an example of uh, from our website yeah of course you can i'll then see as i'll uh, just show you need to you need to give a heads up on what are all the uh, career opportunities um, available in the digital marketing segment uh, where okay. someone uh, who is a, uh, means most of them are freshers how they will okay. uh, find uh, starting their career with uh, digital marketing so that you can uh, explain 
Okay, okay, perfect. So are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes, we are seeing. Yes, sir. Everybody is able to see, right? Okay, cool. Fine. So here I, I'll just answer uh, the the you know the call to action part here. So when while designing the website for Freshmind Ideas, so here you can see two two things. These both are buttons. So I want people to start a project. Okay, it's fine. Uh, you know, if they want to watch a video about a company, it is fine for me. But my intention here is whoever comes to the website, they should take an action, which is start a project. And when they uh, hit start a project, it will it will take you uh, you know to the next uh, step. Like you know, it it will become a lead. Similarly, in 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 the website also, I have put it in in several areas. Like for example, I've put like brilliant mindset work, love, love playing with fresh ideas. People can avoid this button, but you know I have put it there because after this uh, heading, we need to have an action there, and it is not just about getting in touch with us. You know, it can be uh, explore more to go to the inside pages and uh, you know things like that. Get a free estimate, and if you just observe, you see this particular thing here, right? The let's talk. Once you start scrolling, this become a uh, you know this will fill with a color because I want people to. Get in touch with me, right? So, on top, I won't highlight it because if this is highlighted, then there is a contradiction. So here also there is an action item. Here also there is an action item. I don't want the user to get confused. So once they start scrolling, I want this to happen here. So that is that is how we have to you know put strategy at at work. So I have put all these things because. You know, whenever they they are uh, they want to take an action, they will be able to see uh, and you know go ahead and take actions. And again, I will uh, show another example inside this page itself. Uh, so there is a career page, and here it is not about uh, getting in touch with us, but to you know apply for a job. So we I have put like join the tribe, and here also I have put like apply. And then towards the for a footer because it is a common footer, I have put a contact us option. You got the point, right? So we have to strategically play this uh, this thing, right? So uh, yeah, Mahesh, you are clear about it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now about uh, Arun's question. So there was a recent uh, uh, you know study by something called Proposal Team, uh, sorry, Prospol Team. That is a um, and that's a team that that do this research on. Um, Trends and all. So they have listed India's top ten best salary jobs for 2021. That's a past year thing. And inside the first thing they have put is data scientist. Second thing they have put is digital marketing professional. That is the highest. Uh, you know they have took all the uh, things and they have put the in in terms of salary, right? So digital marketing is a, it's actually it's a wonderful career. The interesting part is especially you are working for. Uh, uh, you know agencies and all if it is individual that's i mean if it is product companies and uh, limited service companies it is fun but uh, the interesting part about you know working in agencies for for example in my case um, today I, I took five calls one is a uh, company who want to who want to sell uh, vegetables online and other is a drone company you see it's it's totally different and you know we get to play around all these uh, things. We can plan ideas on you know how say for example if it is a drone thing you know what all things they need to highlight and then it comes to and um, uh, what it is called the Ethernet, the Bitcoin kind of uh, you know cryptocurrency kind of a startup, and then it then comes a startup who want to put premium bags, the leather bags. So when when you when you especially when you have the uh, you know, power to use our ideas and um, play around it. It's 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 less about doing a, a repeated task. It's it's not like a job. It's like a fun because you get to play around different verticals. You get to play around. You know, as I said, like there is social media, then there is digital marketing for uh, you know the SEO is there, the SEM is there, email campaigns are there. Recently, I have. Uh, 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 done a branding for that is uh, branding and marketing we are doing what that company does is they actually take these brass items like you know the brass vessels and things like that and they collect it from local artisans and they sell online and they are they are actually it, it's we it sounds like a small uh, business but their turnover is in crores 
Okay, that is how big that particular niche is. So we, uh, when we do digital marketing, we need we can actually experiment with this kind of thing, and it's a wonderful industry. Like you know, we and you will have like similar to coding, you will have the freedom to work from anywhere in the world. Only thing is, you will need to have a laptop and a computer, and you can uh, sorry, laptop and internet, and you will be able to uh, work on it. So yeah, if you uh, ask about the uh, you know reason to choose, what I am saying that in terms of financial also, it is like. you know it is one of the top 10 uh, best salary jobs and it's not me who is saying this you can check it online uh, even in freshman academy so we the freshman academy page we have recently started on instagram page there also i have put a paper clip like a uh, clip of this particular article yeah that is how big the opportunities is and and just I, i hope you remember in the initial slide i have shown that 87 percentage is the increase in use of social media and uh, you know other digital uh, channels imagine the opportunities you have i don't have to express uh, I, i don't have to explain it right education is going online um fintech is is booming and then there are a lot of things are happening and when people are going online the then the uh, demand for marketing is also going up right so yeah the the scope for this particular industry is really high and only thing is you have to stay updated because every day new things will come yesterday uh, there is a news saying that through uh, instagram you will be uh, able to start subscriptions right so people can pay for watching your uh, uh, reels and videos you can put exclusive thing they have uh, they have rolled it in us it will soon come to india as well so that big is the industry and you have to stay updated that's the only uh, only thing this industry is fast going Uh, if you if you are stuck it's you know it's like it's like watching the math teacher doing an equation it will start from a small uh, you know a plus b and if you are turning your head and when you look back the the whole board will be filled with lots of equations and you will have no clue what happened so you have to stay updated and see what is going on yeah so you you have any any questions any more questions anything you need to Uh, ask sir what i heard from uh, you are on mute sir what i heard from others is that uh, digital market is an uh, unlimited career op uh, opportunity like unlimited um, placement there is unlimited placement in digital market uh, digital marketing is it correct see uh, if you look at uh, the uh, not just digital marketing if you look at any particular uh, thing that is fast going uh, for example the, even for coders right as similar to what the uh, marketing people are playing their role similar to that there is a huge demand for coders as well otherwise we won't be able to communicate like this seamlessly so every industry has its own demand of course because uh, people are going digital uh, digital this fast the demand is very high that is why like you know uh, that's why we we do run the institute as well like you know we have this academy as well because and we have assured that we will assure you the placement like we are assuring like 100 percentage placement as, uh, assistance that is because we know that there are so much demand even inside our company as well there are so much demand for uh, you know having talents so the industry is growing and take any example you know you take the swiggy you take the uh, zomatos and uh, you know other platforms like bank open or what all the platform is they are all trying to um, get attention and they are all trying to make sales and revenue through digital channels right and you have to play uh, you have to keep in mind uh, about these things and then you have to plan your career and also i want to say that uh, even though i said that you know the opportunities and the salaries are very high initially your intention should be to learn as much as possible because in the beginning of your career your intention should be to learn more than earn because this is a this is a, a marathon it's not a sprint so you know you have to you have to take a lot of insight you have to do a lot of trial and error and then you will you will know that okay this is how you need to proceed and progress 
Yeah. So to answer your question, of course, it's a, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. If you just Google like, you know, digital marketing professional job, you will be, you know, you'll, you, 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 you'll, you'll understand how much opportunities are there. Every company is hiring. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, Arun, should we uh, wait or any any questions anybody have? Yeah, well, one one last thing we will discuss. I I know about this, but you can speak. Um, so uh, the point is, um, knowing coding will help in digital marketing, or knowing digital marketing will help them in the UI UX design or in the coding. So how do you evaluate it, and what is the advantage of knowing both? Uh, things not advanced things basic knowledge of both uh, will be helping in the uh, other thing sure sure so uh, it remind me about some funny incident happened a uh, few years ago i was working for a us based company and uh, the the ceo was in us when he came to india indian office for vacation he called us and said like you know i have people working in in india and i have people working in us uh, the people working in India are more um, like affordable for for the company, uh, but the thing is like, say for example, I need an an a, a code where if the door is closed, the, if the door is open, I want to close the door. Okay, he just mentioned like if the door is closed, uh, sorry, if the door is open, I want I want you to write a code where the door is closed, and I give this task to a US guy and an Indian guy. He's just uh, giving an imagination situation. And he said that the output is uh, both of them write, write the code, but what the Indian did is if the door is open, it will close. If the door is closed, then it they will open the door and then they will close, right? So the thing is that they didn't understand the purpose behind this particular activity. The US guy will will check whether the door is closed or not. If it is closed, he will he will not do anything. But what the Indian guy said is, uh, if uh, it is if the door is already closed, he will open it because the you know task given to him is to close the door. He will open it and he will close. You understand the difference, right? So this is where we need to apply. So if you know coding and if you know marketing, that's a great mix because you will know what is the purpose behind uh you know the activities you will know the why once you understand okay uh, as is as uh, uh, mahesh right mahesh asked earlier why should we have a call to action and uh, even without the call to action the website will function there is no issue from a coding perspective from a developer perspective the website will work there is no need of to add a button there because if if you want to go to a page you can if you want to contact there is a menu called contact you can click there, go to a page and take action. But from a marketing perspective, if you know that, you know, this particular visitor who have visited your website will only spend say five seconds in your website, not more than that. He may not even scroll the website. So within this three to five seconds, we have to hook, we have to give him a task. Someone who understand this type of thing, they will know that, you know, if someone asks to design a website, this is this is what they want. What is their business? What is the action they want the visitor to take? Because almost 99% of the digital marketing effort will will point you to a website or a app or or particular, uh, especially a landing page. And after putting all the effort in digital marketing, if the website is is not designed in a considering you know to take an action the entire activity of that uh, digital marketer will get wasted right so at the end of the day customer doesn't want to see like how many millions of clicks happened uh, in an ad and uh, how many million people visited your website all they are concerned about is how many sales i am going to make and after doing the entire marketing activity if they come to website just to understand that it is not working properly or you know if there is no call to action if there is no uh, and you know sometimes that what what i do is that they will design it in a uh, laptop and they may not check the mobile uh, uh, you know responsiveness 
that again is a problem there is a large community out there who use mobile phone for uh, browsing so we need once you understand these things you will think that okay this customer might use a mobile device to browse so we need to make sure that it is visible in the mobile device and when it comes to mobile device we can actually skip certain things like those are not relevant and you can put if if you have the knowledge of coding and marketing uh, trust me there are companies who really want to take you because you know the moment they tell certain things you will be able to catch up you will be able to know that okay this is what they need and then you can code accordingly so yeah so these things you need to consider of course that is that is why it is it is vital at least you don't need to know the technicality see if your passion is in coding i'm not saying that you should know the technicalities of setting up uh, digital marketing activities and all once you understand the simple common sense of marketing you will be able to crack it vice versa also uh, you know when when uh, when i showed the website i am not a coder so when i show the website i know that you know from a marketing perspective i know that this is the color and this is the thing that we need to put there to do that i have a developer who is uh, you know able to do it but from a marketing perspective if i know how to uh, you know set this up uh, i mean uh, how to direct someone to set this up then it will be well served in in a way that developer knows uh that your presence is not required he could make it otherwise you have to guide him uh to make it perfect so each time your revision number of revisions is going to be high if he don't know that marketing perspective Correct. basically and, that applies to the ux developers as well ui ux uh true. developers as well true true yeah. Yeah, because okay. this both are connected and you know uh if if say for example if a project manager saw that you know you are catching up then the chances of you you know going on top in your career is very high because they don't have to spend that much time spoon feeding you know and uh, telling you that this is what we need this is the reason so sometimes even they don't know like you know why the purpose is and then you can ask smart questions like in shall we put a call to action here so that yeah. that's and, um Uh, i think one thing you didn't uh, speak about in the whole session is uh, the designers and the photoshop illustrator workers who uh, who are uh, whom we call as the you know the creative work people right. so what is their role uh, in a digital marketing world absolutely so uh, yeah i i missed that point because of you know, <laughs> of the time and all so basically uh, we can divided to three uh, one is the strategy part one is the creative part and one is the technology part these three things are vital so when it comes to the creative part as i said like you know we get a very minimal time of this user you know he will be busy with so many other things while browsing your website he will also get distractions from whatsapp and maybe phone calls and things like that so we have a very limited time and how to hook the uh, you know user to take them to the, the to the website that is what we we need you know that is where we need the creative people right and also for the posters as well for example the you know we have to create beautiful looking things so that our intention won't be at that point our in, intention won't be to sell their product but to catch attention you might have noticed that you know why people are putting so much effort in um, high paid photo shoots or uh animations that are costly or or you know things that that takes so much time to do what what they do is that all they want is the attention you know so in marketing there is something called the ida model it stands for awareness interest desire and action at first they need to have an awareness they need to have an attention what is it then they will think okay uh, that design looks classy and and design have this fundamental thing where with a design you can actually communicate um subconsciously to people that you are having a uh, you know a great brand or a trendy brand or a you know uh, an interesting brand things like that you may you may not even see the thing for example uh, you might not have uh, found the say for example if you, if you haven't checked for any any particular um you know you you, do, you don't know about a particular brand by just seeing the branding you will you know on top of your mind you will understand that this is a premium brand how you know is 
the type of design, the type of color, the type of font selection that they have put, the type of aesthetics, type of image they have choose. And we can, uh, so it is like we can actually fake the mind. It may not be that premium brand, but with the help of design, we can, you know, we can kind of uh, tease the mind saying that this is a premium brand, right? That is the power of design. So, and uh, there's a famous uh, quote by uh, someone called Paul Rand. He said like, design is the silent ambassador of your brand. And that is totally true because that is what people look at it at first. They will have a, you know, because we, we think in visual, so if we have something creative, if we find something interesting, then the, you will think about, uh, you know, having it. For example, take the case of all Apple products. You know, they have they they put it in a simple minimalistic way. You will feel that you know this is this is the most pure technology you can have, right? So that is that is the power of uh, design and creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think uh, Mahesh, we can wind up the session, right? I don't think uh, many other people doesn't have any other questions uh, about yes, this. Yes, sir. We can hope you up. all, yeah. Hope you all have enjoyed the session. So, if you find this session better, helpful for your career aspects, and you can give a thumbs up in the chat box or in the handwriting symbol. So, I will be more happy. To receive that. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thanks. So it was a great session, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, especially uh, around the marketing things that we should consider. Uh, it was really great. Yeah, I hope I added value to uh, what you already know. And uh, if you need any help, you can feel free to get in touch with me. And I'm there like you can just go to Google and search who is Ajay S. Nair and uh, it will somehow will uh, take you to my LinkedIn page and you know you will be able to connect with me. Thank you so much, guys. And Arun, especially thank you for the invite. Uh, it's nice talking to young minds. Okay. Take care. Okay, guys. So I'm signing off. Uh, have a nice day to you. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ajay. Peace, man. Uh, all of you, you can leave also. Today's session is over. I'm not going to speak anything more. Hope the session was useful for your next steps. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you for the session. Thank you. 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 Mahesh, you stopped the recording?